Okay. It's just we we understand the difference. We got to understand the difference. Carbon is twelve and uh, copper is sixty, so it's a force of five to one. Mm. So it, this is where it comes from. With a zinc and a nano coated copper, we create a magnetic field from the nucleus point of view. This is the difference. Mm. Where with a carbon you create the atomic structure withdrawal, where in that position the the process is so rapid that you produce carbon, which you have to support it with the oxygen. And if you uh, produce CO2 from the physical element of the carbon, you are connected to the physical dimension of the, uh, the, 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 the material. It's very much like the iron, which is in a metal condition, in a physical matter condition, coming in touch with the GANS of the amino acid produces the blood. But if you put the GANS of uh, iron in a different shape or form into the amino acid, you produce a pure blood, homoglobin, the real homoglobin. You still produce the same, but is not the same strength of the same order. There are two different things. The iron you take as a tablet, is very much different than the iron you digest from eating, a, let's say, red meat. The one you take as a tablet is uh, um, is in a matter condition, and you absorb all of it. In the one you take with meat, body only takes what it needs. This is the problem with a lot of the the food. This is one of the reasons I always explain, even in the teaching earlier today, that when you take your like uh, magnesium, zinc, and copper, you take it with CO2 and zinc oxide because you create the condition of entrapping it or delivering it in the environment of the body of the man. And body only takes what it needs. When you take a magnesium tablet, uh, you, all of it goes into, because it's a stronger, so it, it enforces itself. When you take your tablets, even like for um, potassium, calcium, magnesium and the rest, you take it in the environmental condition of the zinc and, cup and um, uh, CO2. It's a totally different process. Now you convert, you distribute it as an atomic molecular GANS level, where the others is different. The same thing is with the CO2 sticks. You have a huge massive force sitting at in copper, five times more, and you literally strip it out. It's just uh, taking your clothes off yourself, or you're standing in a huge uh, wind tunnel and getting everything stripped off you very fast. That's all it is. But the essence of the carbon you create in a zinc plate, magnesium, um, copper plate, is a gans state magnetic field. It's totally different structure plasma. Where with a copper stick, you still you create a CO2, it's very fast, but it's not recommended as such for the use as a for a drinking, uh, what they call it, uh, the plasma water, unless your body needs it. It's a big difference. No. And the Rolls Royce are still both cars, depends which way you want to drive it. May I ask, um, one of the discussions that has come up is the thought that the carbon is a nanomaterial, and I'm, I'd like to know what your thought on that is. And some, you can know... You, can you explain? I missed the word, you just got disconnected. Yes, um, the question that some discussion that has come up is that the carbon is a nanomaterial because it's burned, say if it was was a piece of some bamboo makes a nice carbon stick and I know that the purity of the carbon stick would make a difference but the idea I think that started it was that it was a hexagonal structure molecular structure as I believe the nano coated copper is and I'm understanding the difference in the molecular weight difference in all yes, of that. Yes you see you, you, the, the, there's a very big uh, 
difference in the understanding. Uh, there is nothing wrong with both of them, but what do you expect to for them to operate on there? You understand? That's the difference. You'll find out when you work with a gans plasma, which is CO2, um, you have the natural effect. With a CO2, which you create from the stick, you have a, you have a different dimension, strength of the plasma. Do you think your mm. body creates that kind of condition? I don't think so. Okay, very good. Uh, they, as we say in English, horses for courses. Just because mm -hmm. it's a horse doesn't mean you can put it on the racetrack or put it on the flat race. How about making um, nano-coated copper GANs with a coil? If um, I'm in a lot of countries where only simple things are available. For instance, right now I'm in very small villages in the Yucatan of Mexico where I may teach a couple of classes and getting materials is um, more a little more complicated. So a copper wire, a heavy wire that could be made into a coil versus a plate. You know, in a third world, in a, in, a, in a condition like you are, in a condition you are, you have already have access to um, pure carbon, which has been converted, if you want to look at it that way. Um, the ashes, the ashes yeah. from wood, yeah? Yes. That's your best solution. Okay. If you, yeah, and if that's you the, let me, let yeah, me explain, sorry. let me explain, please. Okay, please. Um, if you make ganses of the ashes of wood, yeah, because the wood has already gone through the transformation in the, um, in the, what do you call it, in the process, as the same as do the carbon stick they make. Yes. But yes. You'll, you'll find out is how you play it and what you need it. In, in South America, for centuries, people have used, I was explaining this to Dr. Cross very recently, I think, that the, the, the South Americans, uh, centuries back, they used to burn wood for heating. And then when they, they threw the ashes out, they, they found out they're getting very good results in growing uh, food. In, in the places that food never grew, they start growing beautiful vegetation, what they needed to eat. And then they actually start burning the woods to create areas where they could put the ashes that they could cultivate. If you go to South America, in places you see lands which are totally black. Because for centuries they, they, put, they literally burn wood to create ashes, to create nanomaterial, to absorb energy, that the vegetation could grow on it. Yes. We've seen that, this is done by the Israelis very clearly after the uh, 1960s war. When they took over the Sinai Desert, the Israelis came up with a fantastic system. They tarmac the desert and they brought the new soil, topsoil on the tarmac. And uh, the oranges you see coming from Israel comes from desert. The big oranges, which is so because Israel yeah. doesn't have that, that land mass to do. They understood the potential of using the land, isolating it or putting a topsoil with a lot of things on it. We see this now, we're coming part of the gnome in Africa. We're trying to um, to change desert to a food center this way, by literally by gas material. Uh, this is what I suggested to the Chinese government. As you know, the central China desert is moving towards Beijing very heavily, and they've tried everything. And the simplest thing for Beijing to do is to literally water the gas and put seeds on it, and it grows, it solidifies the more the desert, and it costs nothing. Mm -hmm. Uh, what you're talking about is the same thing, creating a gas or creating the environment of the gas. Yeah. When I was in China last time, uh, years ago, this was a discussion, what we're going to do with the movement of deserts into Beijing. We'll run Beijing over in the next 50 years, 100 years, most probably. But by changing the environment, you let the sand be there, you create a condition where the trees can root, and plants can root, and it stops the movement of the desert. There is no other solution. And it costs literally nothing for the Chinese government. 
And you do the same. When you put in, in South America, you say in a remote village or whatever, the ashes are your best uh, cancers. Because they're already converted mm. to nanomaterial. You have to find a way to convert it. Put it in the soul, ratio a different connector, electric connection with them, discharge, and you will see. 